Okay, good morning. Welcome to the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries. I'm your host, John Krupa. This is the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries. We got a case today right out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is a Philadelphia... First it was deemed a homicide, and then later they switched it to she took her own life. And this is kind of an infamous case, an unexplained death. Ellen Greenberg, uh, her parents say it's impossible she took her own life. We are going to draw Ellen Greenberg and tell you about her story at the same time today on this episode of the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries, guys. Strap yourselves in. You're about to enter the world of drawing, mystery telling, and a little comedy. Guys, make way for the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries coming at you in a second. Okay, well, it is a supernatural day. And that is uh, a television show. I am unfamiliar with this television show, but it, uh, today, September 13th, celebrates uh, all things related to a supernatural television show. Now, uh, me being me, I didn't really want to put the television show theme song on, so I'm I'm putting some supernatural music on in the background here. We're going to listen to that as we tell you the story of Ellen Greenberg. Ellen Greenberg died by suicide with 20 stab wounds. Her parents are out to prove that was impossible. And this is this is a picture of her, a very attractive young woman. Homicide detectives hate to admit it, but there's an off and all but certain way to get away with murder. Now this article is from July 3rd of this year. Family of teacher 27 who's stabbing death including 10 knife wounds to the back of the head and neck was ruled as she took her own life. The man demands for this case to be reopened amid claims her fiance's father donated to Pennsylvania AG before he rescued himself from case. Ellen Greenberg was found stabbed in her Philadelphia apartment in 2011. Officials said it was that she took her own life despite at least 10 wounds to the back of her head. Her father claimed her autopsy showed bruises in different stages of healing. The family thinks this is hogwash. So do I.
We got some supernatural music on in the background here. The family of a teacher who was found brutally stabbed in her own home in what was deemed to take in her own life by authorities have demanded that the city's mayor reopen her case amid claims the governor had a conflict of interest. Ellen Greenberg was 27 years old when her fiance Sam Goldberg found her dead in the kitchen of her Philadelphia apartment on January 26, 2011. She had 20 stab wounds including 10 to the back of her head and neck. It's also a, a very important key in this is that there was a snowstorm that night and the fiance Sam was said to have wanted to go to the gym on a snowstorm. So maybe the gym was within walking distance. So if the gym was close by, okay, that wouldn't really bother me, but the timing of the gym is kind of a red flag. Also, the amount of time he was at that gym, he was only there at least 25 minutes to half an hour. Her parents have been on a journey ever since to get what they say would be justice for their daughter who they claim was being abused by Sam Goldberg whose family allegedly donated to then Attorney General Josh Shapiro now the state's governor and this is all public record guys this is in a newspaper article in on July 3rd here Ellen's father, Dr. Joseph Greenberg, told Fox News his daughter had injuries on her body consistent with abuse. That's what I think the whole issue of this story, the grieving father added. Somebody didn't want Ellen's abuse to get out there, and that's why she is passed away. Here's a picture of the happy couple. That is her fiance, Sam. There's the picture of her parents. Back in 2022, independent journalist Gavin Fish claimed in a YouTube video that then Attorney General Shapiro had a clear conflict of interest. In the case, and that Goldberg's family worked campaign donors then Attorney General Shapiro re rescued himself from the case three days after the video was published as reported by Fox News at that time the AG's office denied the conflict of interest was real
we have supernatural music going on in the background here and it would have taken supernatural effort to stab yourself 20 times some say it was 19 but either way seems impossible impossible While the Office of Attorney General does not have an actual conflict in this matter, circumstances beyond our control have created the appearance of a conflict, and our involvement is no longer serving one of the primary purposes of the District Attorney's original conflict referral, Shapiro's office told the Philadelphia Inquirer. This month, Dr. Greenberg claimed Ellen's autopsy report said that she suffered a huge laceration in the back of her head and that she was covered in bruises in different stages of healing. That's what I think the whole issue of this story who told Fox News somebody didn't want Ellen's abuse to get out there and that's why she is gone. It's important also to note that the butcher block was knocked over with a knife taken out of it. Why is that important? It shows uh, that there was some kind of struggle in my opinion and in other people's opinion also. That's a very key component to this case. The butcher block containing the knife was knocked over like someone was grabbing for it. Someone we don't really know which which person did. There is no signs on the security camera that anyone was in or around Ellen's apartment other than her fiance and her during the time of the so-called taking of Ellen's life. So that rules out an, an intruder. And it was someone with access to the house because of the way the lock was positioned. Ellen's death was originally ruled a homicide, but the medical examiner's office then changed it to taking her own life. After a meeting with police and prosecutors, per her family, a petition asking Mayor Jim Kinney to reopen and investigate Ellen's case has collected more than 150,000 signatures. DailyMail.com has reached out to the offices of Mayor Kenny and Governor Shapiro. Officials have, for years, said they have found no evidence of foul play in Ellen's death. What? <laughs> what? This is just insane that they could make a statement like that. Uh, 
19 stab wounds and um, on the thumbnail it shows you where those stab wounds have occurred there there's no way someone could inflict that to themselves if you stab yourself in the back of the neck as soon as you stab yourself within one or two times you're going to be paralyzed you're not going to be able to continue stabbing yourself 15 to 16, 17 more times because you would, you would have would hit your cervical cord rendering you paralyzed that's what happens to wrestlers when they jar their neck they can't move their hands or their feet what do you need to stab yourself your hands and your arms can't you move your hands and arms when you severed your neck this is a ridiculous case in my opinion a waste of taxpayers money Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner also previously rescued himself from reinvestigating the death after having previously worked with the Greenbergs. Greenberg had 10 stab wounds to the neck and back of the head with an additional 10 to her stomach, abdomen, and chest. A knife was still plunged into her heart. At the time, police claimed that the door of Greenberg's apartment was locked from the inside and there were no signs of a struggle. That may be all well and good, but there was two people with access to that lock and that door. Her and her fiance. Goldberg told investigators he had come home, that's the fiance, in 2011, kicked the door and found his fiance dead with a knife clinging to her chest. The cell phone records says that he was trying to get in for an awful long time. I think it was 40 minutes. You know, that's an awful long time to um, try to get into your own place. You just, even he was there. He was there for 40 some minutes. I mean, if he says you just kick the door in, uh, that doesn't take 40 minutes to kick the door in. Something is off with this story. In a chilling 911 call, he told police Greenberg had stabbed herself. Help, my fiance is on the floor and blood is everywhere. He later added, I can't see anything. There's nothing broken. Ellie, I think she hit her head. Oh my God, she stabbed herself. She fell on a knife. There is a knife sticking out of her heart. Chester County District Attorney's Office began an outside investigation into Ellen's death last year, but... Now, Governor Shapiro had been sitting on the case for years while he was Attorney General.
he stole years, he stole four years from us holding the case in his office and he, we have no evidence of him doing anything, said Ellen's mother, Sandy Greenberg. The Attorney General then, Shapiro's office, however, previously said it had undertaken an exhaustive review and conducted new forensic analysis, but their additional efforts did not bring more closure to the questions around Ellen's death. Chester County officials have said their investigation into the case is ongoing. The Pennsylvania Office of the Attorney General alleged that several death and taken your own life related searches had has been performed on Greenberg's laptop in the weeks leading up to her death. Goldberg said the hard drive was subsequently examined by the FBI and lab in 2011 and no such searches were found. The family also commissioned a photogrammetry re reacting each, recreating each of Ellen's 20 stab wounds. It showed the size, depth, and length of each stab wound with the creators concluding that all of them could not have been self-inflicted particularly the ones to the back of Greenberg's neck and head. In the weeks prior to her death, Greenberg's parents, Josh and Sandy, said something had been troubling their daughter. However, they did not believe she was going to take her own life. A couple of weeks before her death, Greenberg told her parents that she wanted to quit her job, come home. They said she could come home if she needed to, but they wanted her to seek help for her anxiety. She told them it was the stress of organizing a wedding. She was due to marry that August and had sent out save the date cards just four days before her death and that the work was particularly busy. There's a lot of holes in this story. Her father said something was amiss. Her personality had changed. She played it off that work was too much, but when the teacher who took on Ellen's class saw her books and marking, marking, she said everything was perfect. Greenberg saw a therapist who prescribed her Ambien and Clonopin for anxiety. Police pointed to this as further support, support for Ellen's taking of her own life. Psychiatrist Dr. Ellen Berman who saw Greenberg three times before her death, was clear that her new patient was 
not planning on taking her own life. Samuel Goldberg, who is now 40, and a married, of, married father of two living in New York, he remained in contact with the family for a year or so following Greenberg's death. Well, looks like he just moved on, didn't he? Conveniently. Guys, this is a travesty of justice. I mean, it is clear to everyone else but the AGs in this case that someone other than Ellen took her life. Guys, that's what I believe. I'll lead you guys to come up with your own conclusion. This is the case of Ellen Greenberg. We got some supernatural music going on in the background because it is Supernatural Day. We'll let that take us out, guys. A random act of kindness is better than a random act of violence. Just be glad that you woke up on the right side of the dirt today, guys. Till next time we meet. Peace out, true believers.